Hello everyone, I am Himanshu Vasnani. I am from Department of Mechanical Engineering. Today I am here to present a lecture on material science. The subject is material science and is the code is ME207. Today we are studying unit number 2, uh, lecture number 1. And because the topic is ductile and brittle structure and ductile to brittle transition. So the our uh, objective for today's lecture is to provide the students with a basic understanding of ductile and brittle structure, ductile to brittle transition. And our outcome after to studying today's lecture will be the students will have students have learned the basics of ductile to brittle of ductile to brittle transitions. So uh, let me start off with today's lecture. So fracture, we have listened uh, this term many times in our lab also and in our other subjects also. The fracture, fracture means separation, something divided into two or more pieces, some broken, something broken. So here we can say that fracture can be defined as a separation of a specimen into two or more parts by an applied stress. So, fracture can be classified either as brittle or ductile fracture. Okay, uh, we know that uh, in our labs, uh, we normally undertake many tests, and in that test, there are also tests in which a material breaks down. So, depending upon the type of material and its structure, structure it, it either it takes time to break, either it elongates and then it breaks down, or it suddenly breaks down. So, uh, these materials are classified under the ductile and brittle fracture. Uh, you can say uh, the former occurs with after little or no plastic deformation, whereas the later occurs after extensive plastic deformation. So we have to we uh, understand that what do you, what uh, what is the basic difference between these two ductile and brittle fractures. So. Uh, the differences like material fracture in ductile fracture. The material fractures after a plastic deformation and slow progression of the crack. And in brittle fracture, the material fractures with very little or no uh, plastic deformation. That is in a china clay glass, etc. In ductile fracture, what happens is the fractured surfaces are dull or fibrous in appearance. They, these uh, fractures they normally uh, they are dull uh, or fibrous in appearance. Then after breakdown of uh, after happening of ductile fracture, uh, the fracture surfaces are only crystalline in appearance. And if you go with the ductile fracture, the uh, the, the, uh, the, the work piece will have either fibrous or dull in nature. Uh, next is in the tile fracture, the percentage elongation is about 30% prior to the fracture. Of, prior to fracture of those means there is a possibility that around 30% uh, of elongation is about 0.5 percent or almost nil prior to the fracture occurs. So here you can see that what is the difference between the percentage elongation. So you can understand that what kind of difference they must be having when it comes to ductile and brittle fracture. 0.5 percent elongation. Can you imagine? Just 0.5 percent or almost nil. When you go for a when the fracture occurs in middle fracture and in ductile fracture, thirty percent elongation. Okay, it is it, it is uh, a good value uh, person of percentage elongation when before the fracture occurs in ductile fracture. Then in ductile fracture, this is reduction in the cross sectional area of the specimen. That is true if elongation is happening in a particular area. Then you also understand that there is a reduction in the cross sectional area of the specimen. And in brittle fracture, there is virtually no change in the cross sectional area because the elongation is not happening and that is almost nil, whatever is happening. So, as such, the cross sectional area will not change in this. Okay. 
then in the ductile fracture the fracture takes place after necking with little sound whereas in brittle fracture the fracture occurs rapidly often accompanied by a loud noise see uh, you might have seen in your day to day life whenever you broke a glass or a heavy material you say loud sound sound comes and then that uh, with accompanied with a fracture and the scattering of the workpiece or the uh, you can say material happens then to break down now you can see that a sound is coming because in little fracture it is having suddenly no elongation whereas in fractile fracture what they do they it it, it elongates it elongates the cross sectional area is decreasing up from and uh, after deformation and after a particular limit it will be it will uh, elastic limit will end and a small portion will is available and at that point necking will happen and a little sound will come and it will break so this is uh, these were the common differences between ductile and brittle fracture which you all must know and understand in order to make it uh, you can say practice in your day to day life why because in the lab when we are studying about materials these kind of properties we should know that whether the material is uh, has ductile fracture property or whether the material has brittle fracture property so we should know or based upon the data and the experimentation we can uh, say that this material has ductile fracture properties or this material has brittle material fracture brittle fracture property so we should be aware of these two kinds of fracture now fracture is caused by the physical and the chemical forces and takes place in two stages the first stage is either crack initiation that is initial formation of a crack and second is crack propagation that is spreading of the crack now what happens during this time that in the crack initiation whenever the crack is formed you can you have seen in your day to day life that after a particular time that crack that is formed and uh, if some forces are applied on it then the spreading of the crack takes place okay so in this way the fracture is caused the fracture takes place firstly the crack happens a small crack an initiation is there and after that a crack spreading of the crack is there it is called as crack propagation if these two uh, steps happen if these two uh stages happen then it will lead to fracture so we should try in order to avoid fracture we should avoid these two stages also in the initial stages uh, avoided then the second stage automatically get over now metals exhibit different type of fractures like uh, which depend upon c which depend upon like type of material then rate of stressing or loading that is loading the stress of state of stress and then temperature now depending upon the you can see the type of material obviously uh, a harder material and a softer material they will have different types of fracture okay why because you cannot uh, uh, press a hard material whereas you can press a soft material so there is a difference in the type of fracture if you have a ductile material sorry uh, you can say uh, if you have a material which is porous in nature it will have different type of fracture so depending upon the type of material and the crystal structure and uh, their properties differ according to the structure so the different type of fractures will happen then rate of stress is getting loading then how much you are putting stress on the it is depend upon stress also then state of stress okay and then lastly the temperature see the temperature is very important because what happens that when if it is at room temperature then the state of the work piece is affected when you increase the temperature the state of the internal atoms that that also differs and then the fracture style or that is also will differ so these four uh, points uh, should be considered that depending on which the metals will exhibit different types of fractures okay 
Now the main type of fractures shown by metals are ductile fracture, sorry, brittle fracture, shear fracture, cleavage fracture, and ductile fracture. These four kind of fractures I will be showing you in the next diagram, which will be helpful to you. It will be showing you that okay, these are the types of fractures. Observed in metals subject to uniaxial tension, like A is the brittle fracture, G, uh, B is the shear fracture, C is the ductile fracture, and D is completely ductile fracture. You can see in the uh, C and D, you can easily see that ductile fracture is happening, the neck has been formed, and, and the D, if you can see that the at the neck, the texture takes place with a little sound. And the complete ductile fracture happens. You can see the two different areas having different cross section. Whereas, if you see in the A that is having a ductile fracture, as you can see, there is no neck formed at that Simply, the fracture has happened. So, in this way, these diagrams, these are just elementary diagrams showing you that, okay, how the fracture may look like. Okay. So, it is giving you a slight idea. Not brittle fracture. The word brittle is associated with a minimum of plastic deformation, that is, with a little brittle fracture, the material fractures with very rapid propagation of a crack. Okay, I am to repeat once again the word brittle is associated with a minimum plastic deformation with a brittle fracture. The material fractures with very rapid propagation of crack, with little or no plastic deformation like a china cup. I giving you example in that only. That first of all, what happens? A small crack takes place, and then the crack propagates, which lead to the deformation or plastic deformation. So this is what is called as brittle fracture. Okay. Now the salient features of brittle fracture are: the brittle fracture occurs when a small crack in a material grows, and the movement of crack involves very little plastic deformation of the metal adjacent to the crack. Now growth growth continues until fracture occurs, that is crack propagation. So what happens that the brittle fracture it occurs when a small crack in the material grows. That is the first step in the crack propagation. That is the small uh, crack, uh, crack in the material grow. It may be due to physical factor. It may be chemical factor. It depends, okay, upon the state of the material. And the movement of the crack involves very little uh, plastic deformation. Now the crack is propagating, moving of the metal adjacent to the crack, right? The crack growth continues until the fracture happens. Now the crack is propagating, and you know if there is no, uh, there is no uh, deformation, deformation, or you can say, uh, you can say elongation, then the growth continue and the fracture will happen. So here the growth continues until the fracture occurs. You can see all all that that crack propagation. So at the surface of a material, the atoms do not have. As many neighbors as those in the interior of a solid, and therefore they form fewer bonds. They see at the surface of the metal. You know that the atoms do not have as many neighbors because they have below them their neighbors not on the above. So as those in the interior of a solid, uh, and therefore they form fewer bonds because they don't have on the upper side any you can say atoms. They which is promised, they can they call them the neighbors. So in the interior, they have that. So only the bonding is with the interior only. So surface atoms are at a higher energy than the plane of interior atoms, obviously. So brittle fracture contains in destroying the interatomic bond by normal stress. Okay, so brittle fracture contains in destroying and interatomic bonds by normal stresses. Now this is a small example showing that how the brittle fracture takes without a little plastic deformation. But here, what happens in the tile fracture? See, it is taking time, and the elongation is happening, and the 
necking will come and after a particular time after necking the ductile fracture takes place and you can see in the diagrams at the bottom that how after the fracture the work piece looks like this is having a uh, you can say mild steel rod with it and after breakage of ductile and little fracture see how difference is there in their shape at the fracture zone okay you can compare the ductile and metal fracture very easily so this this diagram was for your idea for your understood that might looking at the fracture zone only might looking at the zone where the fracture has happened you can easily tell that this fracture is either a brittle fracture or a ductile fracture okay understood i hope you have understood my point okay now brittle fracture next property uh, next points for this uh, brittle uh, fractures what you are studying brittle fractures brittle fractures in materials in metals is characterized by a rapid rate of crack propagation with minimum energy of absorption with no gross deformation and very little micro deformation okay what happens that in brittle fracture the very uh, it is said that very rapid rate of crack propagation is happening with very little absorption of energy okay so what happens that the adjacent parts of the metal in brittle fracture are separated by just normal stresses to the fracture surface okay whereas if you say about a tile fracture this does not have produce plastic deformation and therefore require less energy than the tile failure where energy is introduced in the process of forming dislocation and other imperfection within the crystal because suddenly the crack propagation is very fast so they don't require any energy so less energy is absorbed if you compare with the uh, tactile failure the tile failure also require energy but it requires more energy than the brittle fracture okay was in the tile the elongation will happen the elongation will take so uh, energy absorption is there so in brittle fracture occurs along crystal planes with fewer atomic bonds that is characteristic crystallographic plane called as cleavage plane so these the fracture is termed as cleavage fracture very easy to understand now brittle fracture occurs at or below the elastic limit of the material why because if it is very below elastic limit then automatically you can understand so brittle fracture occurs at or below the elastic limit of the material. then the brittle fracture more information uh, normally brittle fracture allows the grain boundaries which can be identified by the granular and shiny look okay so you can identify with a shiny look and there may be brittle fracture might have happened so in some instances this type of fracture can cause a grain boundary film of hard brittle second phase i have told you earlier also like that formed by bismuth and copper the tendency for brittle fracture then increases with the increasing because or increase, uh, increases with decreasing temperature the tendency for brittle the tendency for brittle fracture increases with decreasing temperature increasing strain rate and stress concentration condition usually produced by much okay now brittle fracture is to be avoided at all cost because it is very dangerous and occurs without warning and usually produces disastrous consequences you all know that whenever glass breaks you all understand that the it scatters and it is so uh, risky that it, it it has pointed uh, uh, ends which may be harmful to a person so we should be uh, uh, should say uh, avoid brittle fracture at all cost and you know that the tendency for a brittle fracture increases with decreasing temperature increasing strain rate and stress concentration condition usually produced by notch so brittle fractures are of a practical importance due to failures of pressure vessels or bridges pipelines hulls of ships etc as you can see in this diagram there is you can say a rod uh, fixed yeah or you can say uh, fixed in a vice 
uh, and a table and a hammer is used to apply some force. Now, if the material is brittle enough, then it will break down after a certain time. But if material is tough, it will uh, show resistance to breaking. And so, in this way also, you can understand that this material, what is actually brittle. Okay. Then the tile fracture, the common name that is always along uh, with the ductile, uh, sorry, brittle failure, ductile fracture. So this signifies large plastic deformation and occurs after extensive uh, deformation prior to and during the propagation of the thread. I repeat, this signifies large plastic deformation and occurs after extensive plastic deformation prior to and during the propagation of the cat. We understand that a certain amount of plastic deformation happens and after that the fracture occurs. So this plastic deformation, extensive plastic deformation requires considerable energy which is absorbed in forming dislocation and other imperfection defection the matter. So here this requires energy as compared to the brittle fracture. See this is a simple diagram showing this uh, brittle and ductile fracture. So you can see that these are the tensile specimens and in the brittle fracture you can easily see that how the surfaces look like. There is no kind of uh, necking forming or not any elongation, just a simple breakdown is shown. Whereas if you show, see the ductile fracture, you can see there is a necking going on, a kind of a cup and cone fracture has taken place. You can see the two specimen on the right hand side, okay, the cup and cone fracture. It is easily shown that there is some kind of curve on the up and bottom portion. So, ductile fracture has happened. So, might, might by just looking at these diagrams, you can easily understand and tell that hope so all like test sample of specimen begins necking and minute cavities form in the neck region. The plastic deformation is concentrated in this region and indicates that the formation of cavity is closely linked to the plastic deformation. Hence, to the plastic due to the dislocation movement, thereby taking the longest time in the fractures. The region in which plastic uh, deformation is happening, that is the dislocation, that is what is, what is, this, that is called dislocation movement. So it takes a long time for the fracture, uh, for the fracture process to happen. I again repeat that the, uh, whenever this tactile fracture is happening, so the area where this uh, dislocation movement is happening, so due to this dislocation movement, it takes long time for the fracture process to uh, happen or to take place. Okay, you should be aware that this requires energy, this movement requires energy, which is absorbed during the tactile uh, fracture process. Okay, so the cavities coalesce and form minute cracks or at the, at the center of the test specimen and the crack propagates outwardly to the surface of the specimen by shear separation in a direction 45 degree to the tensile axis resulting in a familiar cup and cone fracture. So this I have shown in the diagram only and how the cup and cone fracture takes place and this point has been explained by this lecture only that the crack propagates outward to the surface of the specimen by a shear separation in the direction of 45 degree to the tensile, resulting in a familiar cup and cone fracture. Now the various stages involved in ductile fracture are shown in figure. Here I'll show you this figure. Now what happens is that the necking begins at the points of plastic instability where the increase in strength due to strain hardening fails to compensate for the decrease in the cross-section. 
necking begins at the points of plastic instability where the increase in strength due to strain hardening fails to compensate for a decrease in cross section length now this occurs at maximum load the formation of neck introduces a triaxial state of stress in the region i repeat once again uh the this occurrence in cross section area this happens at maximum load so the formation of neck introduces a triaxial state of stress in the region okay a hydrostatic component of tension acts along the axis of the specimen at the center of the neck ridge okay hydrostatic component of i'll show you all this in the diagram hydrostatic component of tension acts along the axis of the specimen at the center of the neck region many fine cavities in this region like in the figure under continued straining these grow and coalesce into a central tract see this diagram see this diagram showing you uh, changes in the tile fracture of a specimen for tensile test okay the specimen is there it is loaded whenever you apply force try to stretch it so what happens that the neck formation takes place uh, showing you triaxial forces you can see the arrows in the figure b in the center which is showing in three dimensions so in the figure c you can see that some kind of uh, neck has been formed and uh, there it has started formation of neck atom and the figure d in the just just before the fracture there is you can see there is the end of neck formation it will not uh, you can say deform more than that net after the uh, end of neck formation it will simple break lead to fracture or breakdown and this is what happens in figure e so you can see that in the center of figure e there is a kind of an cup and cone formation on the uh, in the specimen you can see in there is a cup and cone formation showing that okay uh, ductile fracture has taken place so this kind of normal uh, procedure of uh, plast of elongation and then neck forming and then fracture is very common in ductile fracture these are the common stages of a specimen in the ductile fracture when the go ahead now this is a scratch grows in a direction perpendicular to the axis of the specimen until it approaches the surface of the specimen so it then propagates to the surface of the specimen in a direction roughly 45 degree to a tensile axis to form the cone part of the fracture one can also explain the fracture of ductile material in terms of work hardening coupled with crack nucleation and growth okay so this is very important this crack growth in a direction perpendicular to the axis of the specimen under it approaches the surface of the specimen now the initial cavities are often observed to form at foreign inclusions where gliding dislocations can pile up and produce sufficient stress so that the void or micro crack is formed okay now what happens that you can see that the test specimen is subjected to a slowly increasing load so material begins to work harden where and the the permanent elongation and the cross sectional area at that point gets decreases so in this way the uh, you can say the uh, plastic deformation is happening in some material and then the associated decrease in areas that leads to formation of the neck because at some point the area will become less and uh, it will get less and uh, formation of neck and the formation of neck at the test specimen will be now due to high dislocation density of the uh, neck region and the material being subjected to complex stress no longer a simple tensile stress then the dislocations are separated from each other due to repulsive interatomic forces and these, these dislocations they come closer with the increase of the resolved shear stress on the the cracks are formed 
due to high shear stress and the presence of low gain boundaries. I repeat, the cracks are formed due to high shear stress and the presence of low grain boundaries. Okay, they are having a high shear stress and they are having a low grain boundary, so in that way the cracks are formed. So once a crack is formed, then it grows and elongates by means of dislocation of the slip. The crack propagation for this mechanism is along the slip plane and these cracks coalesce. Obviously, one crack grows at the expense of other and finally crack growth results in slip. So in this way, the tile failure takes place, the tile fracture happens. Okay, so the common examples are that rock, concrete, glass, cast iron have a property of a tile material. Property they can be called as a tile material. Sorry, brittle material. And, uh, so they may break down with very nil uh, this uh, plastic long version and the tile fracture means fracture for material in the large plastic deformations so before fractures so like fracture of soft steel and rubber and plastics these are all the tile fractures uh, rock concrete glass and cushion these are all brittle fractures so you should be aware of that then uh, if you uh, want to have comparison when parameters are there and you want to compare a telemetal fractures and you can say that the strain energy required is the tile is higher and the is lower then the stress during cracking is increasing the tile fracture whereas the metal is constant then crack propagation it is slow in the tile fracture and the still in is faster then warning sign in metal fracture, it is plastic deformation, whereas in sorry, in the tile fracture, it is plastic deformation, whereas metal fracture it is none. In deformation, you can say the there is extensive deformation in the tile fracture, and there is little deformation in metal fracture. Now, when it comes to necking, necking yes, there is a necking in the tile fracture, and in metal it is no neck. Then fractured surfaces, these are rough and dull. When it comes to a uh, fracture surface of a tile fracture and it's smooth and dry, when it comes to the fracture surface of a metal fracture. Then, type of materials like most metals, they have a tile fractures, and in terms of metal fracture, you like ceramics, glass, ice. So, these are all examples of metal fracture. Now, the tile to brittle transition. This is also very important. That's why we have uh, to discuss this also. And this is commonly observed in BCC metals and almost missing in most of the FCC metals. BCC is body centered cubic structured metals, and FCC is face centered cubic structured metals. Okay, this transition is observed at low uh, temperatures, extremely high rate of strain or notching the metal. This is very important when selecting materials for engineering purposes. Now, what tile to brittle transition from the tile to brittle happens for all the transition transition. It is converting from the tile to brittle. So it is an important thing. So one can explain the, the tile to brittle transition with the help of the figure that I am showing you. Okay, it shows the plot fracture stress and yield stress as a function of temperature or strain. So here, sorry. Here in this diagram, you can easily see uh, this is diagram number four two. Okay, the tile to brittle transition as a function of grain size and temperature. So you can see there is a line three D. Okay, showing the region, and it has a transition region around that. Okay, in the upper side it is showing grain size on the left hand side is showing uh, 
and in the bottom the transition gain size distribution and then you can say that there is the transition region in which the whole transition takes place then there is okay you can say that there is a stress for fracture or stress for using plastic and you go for the transition time so what happens that during this thing you can easily see that how the transitions takes place now in the diagram the curve for the brittle fracture stress rises slightly to the left because the energy surface so the surface energy increases as temperature so we wrote uh, we saw that the strong temperature dependence in the yield stress curve in a bcc metal and metal oxide stress from this figure it is clear that two curves intersect and a vertical line is drawn at the point of collision okay which is called as a tile to brittle transition i repeat it is only that two curves intersect and the vertical line is drawn at the point of intersection which is called as the tile to brittle transition temperature now if a material is stressed and at a temperature or strain rate which is to be right side of line theory it will reach its yield point prior it reaches the brittle fracture stress okay will and will undergo some plastic deformation prior to fracture so here uh plastic deformation will happen okay before fracture now however applying a stress again under a condition which lie left on the line cd cd is the common line okay uh, which results in the tail fracture of you okay so obviously at all temperatures uh, below the transition temperature the fracture stress is smaller than that of the yield stress and this reveals that fracture stress may be controlled by the yield stress as the applied stress which is a uh, value equal to the yield stress so the crack is nucleated at the intersection of the slip planes and propagates rapidly so the temperature range over which the rapid changes takes place it is termed as the transition range okay the temperature range is for is called as transition region you can as you have seen this transition region i have told you uh, see the gray part transition region in the center on the left hand right hand side of cd line there is a transition region this is the temperature range okay you can see at the bottom there is a temperature showing arrow so this is the temperature range okay and there is a transition temperature also shown at the point d also so you can understand the importance of this in this topic so uh, for my still the consumption of energy in an impact test as a function of temperature is shown here this okay then by fast loading one can achieve a strain rate in impact testing machine we know that increasing the strain rate is equivalent to loading the tank so we we have to be careful this means that the materials that are ductile when strained slowly at a given temperature will behave in a little in a brittle behavior when subject to a high strain rate okay so the ductile to brittle transition is quite dangerous from design point of view okay this is a uh, mild steel the very for mild steel the variation of impact energy the function of temperature at the bottom there is temperature you can see how it is transitioning okay you can see that this, uh, so this is a simple uh, graph showing the transition temperature and the variation of impact energy in function of temperature for mild steel so now fatigue failure now fatigue it is a failure of a material by fracture when subjected to a cyclic stress okay cyclic stress means you are something applying you know, for stress on so it is that when you take a work piece and uh, apply stress like stress so fatigue can occur at a stress whose amplitude is much smaller than the static load required to produce the fatigue so maximum stress that a material can withstand without failure for a specific large number of cycles of stress is termed as fatigue or endurance limit okay i repeat 
the maximum stress that a material can withstand without failure for a specific number of stress cycles of stress is termed as its but limit fatigue limit or endurance limit. this is very important how much cyclic stress it is it can hold okay this is called a fatigue limit or endurance limit so fatigue is distinguished by three main features okay this fatigue you can say the fatigue limit or endurance limit or this fatigue is distinguished by three main features one is the loss of strength loss of ductility and increased uncertainty in the strength and service life now engineering materials are often subjected to fluctuating loads while in service obviously the in service it will lead to some kind of fluctuating loads common thing so few examples of components which are subject which are subject to fluctuating loads are air cars being subjected to turbulent air then leaf spring going to and fro then you can say connecting rod pushed and pulled in piston and wheel and some parts of compressors pumps and turbines due so to repeating loading and vibration so this this is the working and during service in a working is uh, these are the components which uh, okay deal with fluctuating loads and alternate stresses so they have tell them so if a metal wire bend to and fro several times okay you are bending a metal wire to and fro several times it appears ultimately breaks down at a point so rotating and vibrating parts of engine in aeroplanes are liable to undergo fatigue and other uh, accidents Huh? And fatigue fractures occur without any warning. They result in brittle uh, fracture. About eighty percent of the failure in engine components takes place due to fatigue failure. Okay, you understand? You are. Uh, it, it also occurs without any warning. So around, uh, they result in brittle fracture. Okay, the steels have generally a fatigue limit which is normally point four to point five times the tensile strength of the material. The steel they have generally a fatigue limit which is normally 0.5 to 0.4 to 0.5 times uh, the tensile strength of the material. 0.4 to 0.5 times. Can you imagine? Okay, it's really so under following conditions the fatigue fracture progressively rapidly happens like the maximum tensile stress at sufficiently high values and large vibrations of fluctuations in the applied stress. Then large number of cycles of applied stress and other variables which may change the condition of failure, uh, such as stress concentration and overloading, corrosion, residual stress, etc. So uh, these uh, fatigue fracture it happens. Uh, so I think that uh, I should start off with the, these uh, properties are there like corrosion, surface finish. We all will discuss it uh, later on, like temperature, micro. Uh, Microstructure, I think, open alloy, the residual stress and heat treatment, stress concentration. So we will discuss it. Now we will start up with the MCQ. Then fracture is defined as the separation of a specimen into two or more parts by an applied stress, which can be classified as either brittle or ductile. So it is true or false. It is true. True. Okay. Then the second question comes: the uh, brittle fracture occurs after little or no plastic deformation. So is it true? False. It's true. You should know. The ductile fracture occurs after extensive plastic deformation. You can compare it to ductile and brittle fracture. The ductile fracture occurs after extensive plastic deformation. So this is somewhere true. This is true. So metals exhibit different type of fractures. You can ah. Uh, have you understand this question? No. This ductile fracture occurs after extensive plastic deformation. It is. Now metals exhibit different types of fractures, which depends upon uh, like the type of material or rate of stressing and loading, uh, state of stress or temperature. So all these kinds of uh, uh, the, the properties of the material we should consider for that. Then the word brittle is associated with the minimum plastic deformation that is with a brittle fracture, the material fractures. With very rapid propagation or crack, crack with very little or no plastic deformation, like a china pot. Is it true or false? Okay, it has given you a simple, uh, you can say, definition of a brittle fracture. So you can understand that what kind of thing with little or no plastic deformation is true. Okay, then again, the temperature range over which the rapid 
changes takes place is termed as a transition region. We have just studied about that transition region. Okay. Then fatigue is distinguished by which features like loss of strength, loss of fertility, or increase certain increase uncertainty in strength and service life. What do you think? The answer is D. All, all these uh, features are required. The stronger tile material metals. But our statement about ceramics is going that ceramics are a tile in nature. This is a or statement that tiles are not okay. Uh, the the find out the or statement about ceramics in the following. So the or statement is that a tile in nature. The answer is C. Uh, fatigue fractures occur without any warning. Any guesses? It is true. It is true. So uh, in today's lecture, I have tried to cover uh, all those topics. Uh, oh, sorry, all those uh, important uh, you can say discussions required for the tile and brittle fracture. And also, I've given you some visual, uh, uh, you can say, images which, uh, which will be helpful to you in understanding the topic deeper. But while working in the workshop, you should always be aware. Okay, while working in either a workshop or any industry, you should be aware that, okay, if such kinds of uh, symptoms are shown after fracture, so you can identify that it, it can be a ductile or it can be a brittle fracture. Okay, so uh, these are the references which you should refer and uh, these references contain contents uh, and uh, if you want to have more knowledge about this today's lecture then you can go with these books read them understand them it will have more content it will have more diagrams which will give you more knowledge but understand one thing that when you study try to understand things which will make you uh, you can say uh, absorb knowledge okay so Today, for now, today's, uh, yeah. so thank you all. Thank you all.